New videos every day. Um, hey guys, welcome to Psyche Truth Live. I've got Mackenzie here with me. Hey everybody. <laughs> and uh, we're going to go ahead and start fielding your questions. So we're really glad to be here. Um, I'm definitely looking forward to this today. I wanted to come in and say hi, and I'm really excited to hear questions from you guys, and then to be able to answer them. I think it'd be awesome. So, um, so I want to go ahead and start this broadcast. Um, a lot of you have commented, let us know when you're going to do your live stream. Let us know. And we're kind of still figuring out times that work best for everybody. Um, so leave a comment. Let us know when is best for you. We're in Central Standard Time, so be sure to leave your time zone so that we can um, we can figure it out where you are. And I just want to go ahead and say to go to PsycheTruth.net and join our newsletter. And that's going to be the best way to know when we're doing live streams because we'll include that schedule in each weekly newsletter. So if you go to PsycheTruth.net and enter your email address, um, you can join our mailing list, and that'll be the best way to know when we're going to be doing these live streams. You can also follow us on Facebook and Twitter, uh, facebook.com forward slash psychic truth. I know I have my own Facebook, and so does Karina. So um, if you follow along those, you can get a little bit of insight into what we actually do every day. Um, and for those of you that were following me specifically, I had strep throat this weekend. Thank you so much for all your warm well wishes. I thought that was super nice of you. So. This Thank is a, a little teddy bear that Mike had made for me. It says, I love Psyche Truth and jazz. Very true. Quite so. <laughs> oh, Sean Pierce says, hello, ladies. Like your shirts. So, Thank you so much. Um, this is Domo. He's wearing a cactus, and it says free hugs, which I think is really funny since I wasn't feeling that great. Um, I don't want to be giving people hugs, really, so it's kind of like stay away from me. Although Domo's cute. And then I guess Karina has a strawberry on her shirt. Yes, it's it, it fresh. says fresh on it. <laughs> this is my new favorite shirt. Okay, so we've got some questions. Um, yes, DTOM214, we are live right now. This is very um, live. This is about as live as you get. <laughs> definitely. Um, so we've got a lot of people. In, we've got a lot of comments in here. Okay. Um, yeah, the way you communicate with us, that's one of the questions from Suge78. Um, leave us a comment. We're reading the comments as you post them, and so this is kind of going to be a free-flowing uh, video here for the next hour or so where we answer your questions. So if it's an appropriate question, um, we'll be more than happy to answer it. If it's not appropriate, we'll probably just laugh. Okay, so we've got Quix55, uh, the documentary Fat, Sick, and Nearly Dead. For those of you who haven't seen this, this is a documentary about a guy who has some severe weight and health problems, and he goes on a raw juice fast, and then he ends up traveling the entire world and the entire United States telling people about juice fasting, and he ends up getting this one guy who's a trucker who's like 400 pounds or something on this juice fast, and you watch him lose all this weight, you watch him playing with his family and his kids, um, so I will say, yes, going on an extreme diet like a raw juice fast is going to be a great way to lose weight. That said, it's going to be hard to keep doing everything you're normally doing, significantly changing your diet like that. Um, adding juicing into your diet is a great way to up your nutritional comment. So I'm very um, in favor of juicing, but juice fasting is something I would definitely recommend having some precautions about. Um, greetings from Estonia. Very cool. Yeah, if you guys, I, I always love reading where people are from. We sent out, I sent out the newsletter today. Um, we put the information together. And we actually have the ability to look at a world map. And every time somebody opens it or clicks on something, like a little bullet thing appears, like a pin drops on the map. And I love knowing where people are from because we really do reach all over the world. So leave us a comment below and let us know where you're from and check in with us and say hi so that we can give you a shout out. So Geo Jimmy 49 um, I don't know if you've watched our food chemicals killing you. It says you've watched some of them, so you've probably seen that one. That's the main video that I've got right now on food chemicals. Uh, Dr. Vince Balanzi did a great video explaining um, MSG or monosodium glutamate and what excitotoxins like MSG actually do to your brain and how they kill your brain cells. 
Um, so go ahead, check out that video if you haven't yet. And yes, we will definitely be doing more videos on food chemicals. Oh, thank you, Lothos1. He said subscribe to the newsletter, people. It's awesome. We put a lot of time and effort into that. Um, there's a lot of exclusive insider information that we put out through there, and it's really awesome. Um, I, I think that if you go to psychtruth.net, there's a pop-up that will show up on the website, and uh, you can enter your name and your email, and you'll get it. It comes out every Wednesday right now, but we're actually looking at, because we have so much content, to do it maybe twice a week in the future. So we've got a lot of really exciting things happening. Um, David Sweeney 111, I actually answered your question about supplements. I did a live cast yesterday about nutrition. And if you go and click on that video, then when you open it, it'll be indexed with all these different annotations so you can skip to the specific question you want. And if you skip to where it says supplements, you'll hear my answer to that question. Jim Wilson in Chicago, sup from the East Coast, super thin guy. Um, how do you help people with an eating disorder or an alcoholic? Um, so I personally don't help people with eating disorders or alcoholism. I'm not a psychiatrist or a psychologist, um, and I'm not a doctor. So personally, I wouldn't treat those things. In terms of giving you a little um, what I can shed in terms of information like that, generally eating disorders or any kind of addiction um, the real problem is not the food or the alcohol. There's usually some kind of emotional trauma that's underlying that addiction. And if you can, get with a psychologist or a therapist and actually address those emotional traumas that are causing you to overeat or causing you to overdrink, then dealing with those emotional traumas is going to help with the eating disorder. And dealing with those feelings of esteem or, or whatever like that um, is going to be crucial to actually solving the issues behind that addiction. Max Van, you're correct. Comments are actually on the side in the live video feed, but as soon as we archive this, they will be down below. So comment on the side. Uh, and then Jim Wilson, hi from Chicago. That's really cool. Thanks yeah, for hi from Chicago, England, Holland, the Ukraine. Uh, Reading, Canada. Hello, Mr. Dustbottom. Ohio. Uh, Rangit Khan. I did answer a question yesterday about my hair also, but yes, once again, same uh, protocol that I do with the things I eat, trying to avoid chemicals. So I read the back of the label and I try to find the one that has the least amount of chemicals in it in terms of hair products and cosmetic products. Um, and again, I'm going to make a whole video kind of talking about how to look for good, um, good skin products. So um, I'm only going to give a shout out to uh, Mr. Zoltan14 because he keeps making inappropriate comments on my uh, public fan page and inappropriate comments in our comment box. Dude, calm down a little bit. You're a little crazy and that's why I banned you. So uh, otherwise, you know, if you want to talk about appropriate things, I'd be more than happy to re-add you. But uh, it's getting kind of annoying, so thanks. Yeah, M. Zoltan, I will say, I've, I've noticed that you leave a lot of comments on our videos. And I deeply appreciate that you leave a lot of comments. But I will say, sometimes it's like, it's a little dirty. <laughs> it's a yeah. little inappropriate. And there's other people that actually want to, like, ask real questions. Um, so <laughs> we okay. We've got the Czech Republic, Houston, hey, Texas, ten Burgundy, mad, France. Ten Madcap. Today's topic is anything goes. Ask any questions about anything for the two of us, and we'll answer. Um, are low carb diets safe over a long period of time? YouTube eight one eight. So in general, I would say that extreme diets, where you take a whole food group out of your diet or significantly cut down on an entire food group, um, generally that's not going to be healthy over a long period of time. That said, if somebody really does a lot of research and really takes the time, it can be a healthy diet. But for most of us, it's going to be really difficult and we're going to end up overdoing it on the other food groups. So when it comes to carbs, I would suggest you watch the video, The Truth About Carbohydrates. And basically what it does is it points out that refined sugar is pretty much equivalent, I'm sorry, refined flour is pretty much equivalent to refined sugar in the way that it affects your body. So avoiding refined carbs, I would do at all cost. But eating good, high quality carbs like whole grains or quinoa, which is what I'm eating right here, um, those carbs are going to be really good for you. They're going to be really healthy, and they're not going to cause weight gain if you do them in moderation. 
Shout out to Patrick Lockerman. Um, I have followed you on Twitter, or maybe I'm not following you, but I read your Twitter, and um, I know you read mine, so thank you for showing up. I have looked at your photography website, and you do some really cool stuff, so um, big fan of your photography. Maybe one day we can, I can get you to do pictures of me. Thanks for showing up. Um, you just search on Facebook for Mackenzie. Um, Sean asks if I'm still fighting fires. I am still a volunteer firefighter. Um, I work two shifts a month for 12 hours. I typically do an evening shift at my local volunteer fire department. So we go out on any calls between that 12 hour period to do whatever. Um, I still hold my advanced firefighting certification and um, I go two nights a month to training as well. So I do have a big commitment for that. Deidre and Penrod. <gasps> My grandmother! <laughs> that's your grandma? Yes, that's oh, your grandmother. that's okay. Mackenzie's grandma. Um, so vitamin D. Vitamin D is really <laughs> crucial for a whole myriad of different things in your body. And actually, um, Dr. Colin Ross did a whole video talking about vitamin D. It's crucial for your mental health. It's crucial for the functioning of almost all of your organs. When you look at how vitamin D is utilized, it's utilized all throughout your body. So yes, if your doctor is recommending vitamin D supplementation, I would definitely go for it. Um, and um, you know, you can get vitamin D from some foods, but taking a supplement is probably the best way to make sure you're really getting enough. Like chances are you can't really get enough in your diet alone, especially since most of us don't get nearly the amount of sun that historically human beings would have been getting. So um, supplementation of vitamin D, I would definitely say is a good idea. I want to give a shout out to my grandmother because she's so awesome. Um, she follows a lot of what I do and she keeps me on the straight and narrow. Uh, she's an amazing woman, really, and I'm lucky to have her be a part of my life. Um, we went to lunch the other day when I was sick and just laughing with her and listening to her like remind me of what some of the comments that you guys leave on videos were and laughing was really good. Laughter is the best medicine ever. So thank you very much, Adi. That's what I call her, Adi. Because <laughs> uh, I could say Grandma Adi when I was younger. So it came out as Adi. But I love you, Adi. Thank you for watching. <laughs> Um, is fish oil good for you? Yes, yes it is. Um, there's actually other oils that you can also get a high amount of omega-3 fats from, but fish oil is a really good one. So if you eat fish or and eat meat, then I would say fish oil would be good. But if you don't eat fish, um, then flaxseed oil, um, hemp seed oil are all going to be really great sources of omega-3s in addition. But you definitely, almost everyone, could be benefited by an omega-3 supplement. So yes, very, very important. Um, and I saw a question in there about somebody who's in five degrees below, um, and what do you do if there's no sunshine? And again, vitamin D suppl supplementation would be my recommendation for anybody who's in a place where they're not getting a lot of sun, uh, which is pretty much anywhere other than Texas, right? Um, somebody <clears throat> asked, uh, it says that they're the Kent Hope says, it frustrates me. I'm 25 and still enjoying candy. How can I quit them? Um, I think Karina, me, and Mike have had discussions here at work about how much sugar I take in. Um, it amazes me watching some of the videos about sugar um, addiction, how bad it is for you. So uh, if you search in there for Psyche Truth um, candy or sugar addiction, you'll find out a lot of really interesting information. Karina might go and they do a lot of research to make these videos and they put a lot of time and effort into them to make sure that they have good information so they're well worth your time to read or watch. Uh, so definitely take a look at yeah, that. We've got a couple different videos about sugar addiction. There's also a couple videos call, um, about junk food designed to be addictive and junk food proven addictive. Um, and all of those different videos will help you understand why you might be addicted to candies. Um, one of the best ways to quit, I say this all the time, start substituting fruit. Um, if you can just, through willpower, start weaning yourself off, so having a little bit less and a little bit less, then over time it'll get easier and easier for you to resist those. And especially if you're giving yourself alternative sweets, like dark chocolate or like fruit, um, and that's going to be a really easy way to not feel miserable the whole time you're doing that. You're welcome, Adi. Of course we'd answer your question. <laughs> um, oh, I like this question. I heart chocolate 71. Uh, what would I recommend to teenagers? 
um, in terms of nutrition. One thing to realize is that um, up until you're you know, 25 or 30, uh, your body is doing a whole lot of growing, and especially when you're in your teens. So I would actually not recommend a teenager going on a really extreme diet or calorie restricting or anything like that. Um, of course, eating healthy is really important no matter who you are. Um, but in terms of going vegan or making a really huge change, again, I wouldn't do that unless you're really, really educated about it. You're really going to put time into doing some research. You're really going to add a whole lot of other foods into your diet rather than just cutting a lot of foods out. So I would say in general, I would not do extreme diets as a teenager. I would wait until I was a little bit older, um, but it can be done safely. Uh, you just really need to put some time into it and make sure that you're doing a lot of research. You're not just stopping eating a lot of foods. There's going to be a lot of new things you need to add in in order to get balanced nutrition. So somebody just commented. They said you girls said this would be anything goes. <coughs> questions? Anything appropriate. Um, this is YouTube, and we want to make sure that we can still make videos. Uh, we don't want to be banned. So um, use your judgment and your best judgment. And if you were in a public place and you were asking a person that you hardly knew any questions, um, make sure that those are the kind that you'd probably ask us. Nothing inappropriate. Somebody said you reckon um, that girl in the free hug shirt would give somebody a hug on the street. This is Domo. If you're not familiar with Domo, he's a little monster. I think he came from Japan. He's wearing a cactus. So um, I'm not feeling very good today. So the free hugs plus cactus and Domo is kind of sarcastic. Uh, um, what's the best diet for a college student? Super thin guy. I would kind of apply over the same thing uh, that I was saying to the teenager question a second ago. Um, especially if you're in college, you're staying up late. <laughs> you are, your brain is going crazy. You're stressed out. You're overwhelmed. Um, so I wouldn't recommend a really extreme diet change. What I would do is lay off the sodas, lay off the sugar. Now, I remember being in college, and every time I had an exam, it was like soda pop and Cheez-Its, and this was like my <laughs> regimen for studying. And you don't realize, wow, you know, you're not helping yourself study if you're loading up on refined sugar and caffeine. So the best thing I would say to college students is resist the sodas and resist the junk food as much as you possibly can. Again, The Easiest Diet Ever is a great video for anyone looking for really simple advice on how to eat healthy. Um, and I would say that applies to every single age group. Um, somebody asked if we voted. I voted this year. I voted. And Karina voted. Um, I think it's really important that you vote if you're able to. Um, <laughs> not to get all uh, cliche or anything, but when you have the opportunity to express your voice and um, tell people what your opinion is in a positive way, I definitely think that's important. Um, being politically active, if you can, is really important. And standing up for what you believe in is important, too. What do you think, Karina? Uh, yeah, I think that, you know, voting is really important. And, of course, we could get into a long discussion about, um, you know, there's a lot of a lot of different, uh, you know, things being said about voting and that your vote doesn't count. But in general, I think that it's important to go out, put your vote out, put your, you know, put your thoughts out there. Um, you know, maybe in terms of the presidential vote, there's all these crazy other considerations, but there's a lot of other things we end up voting on too, like propositions and like our local officials and our local representatives. So yes, by all means, educate yourself. Learn about the government that is representing you. These are your public servants. They're not pub called public servants for no reason. They're there because they're supposed to be representing us. And if you don't go out of your way to vote or call your representatives and tell them how you feel, then how can we expect them to represent us? Exactly. Um, and uh, it doesn't matter who we voted for because we voted for things that we believed in. And the cool thing about America, in my opinion, is that uh, you can believe in whatever you want to believe in, and then you can go forth and do what you feel is appropriate. So um, that's probably all I have to say about that. Um, Sasha Cornish, I don't know what to say. It sounds like some arnica, um, either gel or pills, would be like the what best. The question? Um, he fell off a horse, and his hip hurts really oh, bad. Oh, that sucks. I'm sorry to hear that. That sounds very bad. So um, arnica is good for pain relieving. You can use it topically or internally, um, you know, uh, I don't wish I had, <laughs> I wish I had some other recommendations for you. 
Um, I'm fluoride free. I do not use fluoride. We've got a couple interviews on our channel about water fluoridation or the addition of fluoride to our drinking water. Um, so if you look up water fluoridation on our channel or fluoride, F-L-U-O-R-I-D-E, um, then you can see our videos about fluoridation. So yes, I've got the Berkey water filter with the fluoride filters. I don't use a fluoride toothpaste. Um, I'm not sure about Mackenzie. Uh, yeah, I do use fluoride toothpaste. Actually, I listen to Karina talk about all these like organic and like healthy things that she uses and like fluoride free toothpaste and it's really inspiring because I never really knew about all the like, harsh chemicals and bad things that were in the things that I use every day. So um, I'm definitely looking into ways to change that, but um, I don't know if I want to give up my, my mouthwash. <laughs> um, hey, Chris. Hate XX5. Uh, Screw you too, buddy. <laughs> I, I don't care what you have to say. You're commenting on our videos, and uh, that's what we like. So, um, thanks for your opinion. I probably just won't actually respond to it. Somebody asked how many push-ups we can both do. Um, I don't know how many push-ups Karina can do, but I can do about 15. And what's really awesome is um, I haven't been in the gym in about a week because I've been sick with strep throat, but uh, I can actually bench my weight on the Smith machine. I'm pretty excited about that. <coughs> I've been going to the gym really hard for the last year, and I really want to compete in a National Physique Committee or International Federation of Bodybuilding Competition. The next one here in Austin is um, its actually in April, and so I'm going to be working really hard on getting my diet right, and nutritionally working everything out, and then sticking to my workout schedule. So I'm excited about that. Um, S Shadow 2, nutritional suggestions for someone suffering from allergies. Um, and in general, if you strengthen the immune system, uh, can good nutrition help allergies and even help asthma be more manageable? So I want to explain something about asthma and allergies. So these are ways of your body telling you that something that you're something is out of whack. So, you know, so um, allergies, your body is trying to flush um, allergens out of your system. That's why your nose is running. Um, so. Of course, you know, some people just have allergens to particular things, but it's becoming more and more com you know, common for people to say, I have allergies. Um, yes, I'm a firm believer that boosting your immune system will help with your allergies. I would not use an antihistamine type product because an antihistamine is stopping your body from trying to get rid of all that crap. So the reason your nose is running, the reason you're sneezing is because your body is trying to get rid of these harmful things. And if you're taking an antihistamine, then you're like stopping your body's process of trying to heal itself. Um, in terms of uh, nutritional things that boost your immune system. Vitamin C is huge. I take supplemental vitamin C. Um, when I'm sick, I'll take six to 10,000 milligrams in a day. Uh, the emergencies are kind of cool, but if you're really sick, you need to go get a vitamin C supplement. Um, oregano oil is also really good. Raw garlic um, and even cooked garlic, but especially if you actually eat the garlic raw, uh, raw jalapenos and peppers, cayenne pepper. I had a really bad head cold um, a week or two ago, and I killed it in two days uh, with a bunch of raw garlic and oregano oil. Um, and I'm going to be doing a video on my tips for, for colds and stuff like that. Um, Somebody just said, I thought his nose was running because he was trying to get exercise. That's cute. But um, Somebody should, you know what? Actually, y'all should leave a comment with your favorite joke so that you can make Karina and I laugh. Uh, DTHorn214, sorry, I can't completely, can't read really clearly what the name says, but, um, why do I feel fatigued after eating processed food like Pop-Tarts, etc.? I have thousands of videos that talk about this. Um, basically, when you are eating empty calories, such as refined sugar and refined flour, which is what that Pop-Tart is full of, you're spiking your blood sugar. And when you do that, your body kind of goes haywire. Your body freaks out, and it floods your bloodstream with insulin. All of that excess sugar is going to get turned into fat. And then at this point that your body is scrambling to lower your blood sugar, it's going to overcompensate, and then you're going to feel really, really, really tired, and you're probably going to feel hungry again. Um, any of our videos about processed foods, if you go to my playlist, I have 
dozens of videos about processed foods that explain that process. And if you watch Understanding Blood Sugar, uh, that'll be another, that's a little video series, but it's a really great way to understand exactly why um, high sugary foods and processed foods end up making you hungrier and end up making you low energy or moody. Um, I know, I, somebody asked if I want to make out on the raw garlic. And I'll just say this, you know, like if you're eating McDonald's or fast food or basically any restaurant, like do you have any idea how much garlic and other food chemicals and flavors they're using? Like if somebody is going to frown their nose at raw garlic, like don't try to come kiss me after you eat some McDonald's french fries. You know, like if you want to talk about bad breath, you know, let's talk about somebody who eats a whole, whole, whole bunch of processed foods. It's going to be way worse than, than what you get from raw garlic. And hey, guess what? Raw garlic has a huge amount of health benefits. So, um, so yes, pucker up. <laughs> so I, I just saw a comment about um, Hurricane Sandy being staged. Um, no, I, I don't think Hurricane Sandy was staged. Uh, the reason for that is because prior to working here, I worked for a local county government office of emergency management and um, I actually am going to school for disaster science um, emergency management disaster science and we learn about I, I'm almost um, well, I'm trying to figure out how to say this I'm also interested in meteorology so um, I'm about six hours away from having a certification in meteorological broadcasting and so I know about the weather and how emergencies and disasters work and Hurricane Sandy to me was not staged. I have friends that work at FEMA and um, I actually have, I was invited to speak on a conference call with Deputy Director Serino. So um, it, it was not staged in my opinion. Um, the devastation was far too great and thankfully with hurricanes we have warnings so we can pre-stage resources and we can respond quickly. Um, we can get disaster declarations going. But um, with other disasters like tornadoes, you don't have as much warning. So um, I don't believe it was staged. Man, I wish that we had time to answer every single one of these questions. Um, but sadly, um, you're, you're right. Somebody commented, little guy, we're cherry picking. There's not really much else we can do. It would be really hard to answer every single question. Um, colloidal, colloidal silver, I also take internally, um, has a lot of health benefits. I'll have to look up this guy who says that garlic is poison. I'm not familiar with that. Um, biomarkers to, to judge how healthy we are. Um, yeah, you know, clear skin would be one thing, but it's not necessary. It's not always. I mean, there's going to be people who are healthy, but maybe their skin isn't clear. But in general, clear skin would be an indicator. Um, not getting sick would be an indicator. Um, and I also would say, like, energy levels. You know, if you're someone who has really hard time waking up or a really hard time going to sleep, that would be an indicator that your health is not in its optimal state. But if you're somebody who always has good energy, you're always ready to go, you don't have trouble falling asleep, that would be an indicator of health. Um, so is somebody, uh, er <laughs> spider turd 45. Spider turd 45. Uh, he asked, can you just at least say my name? So we did. Um, somebody just asked about FEMA camps. Um, I, I really don't believe in FEMA camps. Um, I've seen a lot of bad information about FEMA, but I just got out of a year-long disaster science fellowship program, which is deeply, um, it's a graduate level study program in disaster theory. I, I really don't think there's such a thing as a FEMA death camp. Um, I mean, you could totally quote me on that. I don't know. I mean, if you show me pictures, maybe? well, um, I actually, I actually remember when I came to Mike, and I was like, oh my god, Mike, there's FEMA death camps, holy moly! And uh, he totally uh, debunked the FEMA death camps. Um, so we'll probably do a video, maybe debunking the FEMA death camps. I, I can um, talk to there's you. a lot of scary shit in this world. Don't get me wrong, but I don't think FEMA death camps are one of the real threats to us. And the thing is, you know, we pointed this out in the conspiracy theory video. You know, there's some things that just are going to be really hard to be knowable. And that is something that, like, is going to be really, really, really hard to be knowable. So, um, so yeah, my personal opinion is that they, I've seen that they are probably not real. Um, but like I said, I can't say that I definitively know that they're not real for a fact because that's just not something that's knowable to me. 
Um, and then the other thing too that I, the reason I find it really hard to believe that female staff camps um, they already don't have that many people that work for them. Um, they they don't get a ton of funding, and their funding. Uh, I mean, they have a lot of reserve people that come in and do disaster assistance, um, but their reserve status. So I just find it really hard to believe that an agency that tiny can do something so horrible. Um, I can't sleep at night and I can't wake up in the morning. Uh, oh, nut G. So this is very similar to a question we got yesterday asking about adrenal fatigue. So um, your adrenal glands are responsible for giving you energy and helping you be able to wake up in the morning. So things that stress your adrenal glands would be coffee, uh, refined sugar, um, stress in general. So if you're having trouble going to sleep, uh, there's a couple different things you can try. And actually, the first thing I would do, we've got a couple videos. I've given tips on sleep. Jen Hillman has given tips on sleep. Jen Hillman has a couple of guided meditations that are going to be really great for relaxation. So some considerations. If you're drinking caffeine after 5 p.m. or 7 p.m., that could be the reason you can't fall asleep. Um, if you are, you know, not doing some kind of relaxation or breath work, somebody asked if I meditate, and yes, I do. I do yoga and I meditate. Um, finding a way to relax and de-stress yourself is going to be a really good way to ensure that you get good sleep. Um, somebody asked if I ever smoked. If you mean like cigarettes, um, I have smoked a cigarette before. I didn't particularly enjoy it. Um, if you're talking about like drugs um, or marijuana or pot, um, I've never smoked pot. I've never done any kind of drugs that my doctor hasn't prescribed me. Um, and I plan on keeping it that way because I work as a firefighter or volunteer and because of some of the political things that I'm involved in, um, I don't feel like that would be advantageous for me. Um, so I've never done it before in my life, which is kind of crazy. You don't really hear a lot about that. But I like to respect my body, and um, I don't think that putting things in there that could be particularly harmful is a good thing. Thanks um, for the question. Mastermind468, I'm sorry that we haven't been able to get to you before, but I do see, I do see your, your comment there. I haven't seen your question yet. Um, and then this is kind of a cool question. I lift weights. Oh, where'd it go? Oh, my gosh. Here we go. I lift weights several times a week, and when I'm done lifting, I immediately want to eat two of everything. It's counterproductive. Any tips to curb my appetite? Oh my gosh. Um, that, that sounds like me. Like, as soon as I get done at the gym, I want to go eat pizza and wings. Like, that's just what I do. And I did that for, like, the first week. So, like, four times in one week, I had the biggest, best slice of pizza, and I drank Shiner beer, and I had these chicken wings, and it was very counterproductive. Um, and so one of the ways that I curbed that is I started to get like a protein shake and immediately after I work out within the first hour of working out you're supposed to intake the most protein that you can in a healthy way and so I just drink that shake right after I work out and um, it carved my hunger long enough for me to get home and make some chicken and when I um, bake that chicken in the oven. By that time, I just had some more protein, and I was good to go. But Karina might have some other suggestions. So, yeah, um, don't be mad at yourself if you work out and then you're really hungry. That means your body is working perfectly normal. If you are going to the gym and you are burning a lot of energy, don't be surprised when you're really, really hungry. Um, so, yes, McKinsey had some really great tips, and I think one of the most important tips here is to just remember that, you know, eating healthy food is going to be way better for you than eating junk food. And if you're eating healthy sources of protein and healthy sources of carbohydrates, then it's not going to be, it's not like it's counterproductive. It's just a necessary part of working out. You're going to have to replenish that energy. So again, I would recommend the um, easiest diet ever and the truth about carbohydrates because both of those videos are going to help you understand how to choose the best foods to eat that are going to give you the most energy. So um, the, the other thing is like spreading out your meals so that you, uh, that way you can like eat a little bit and then eat a little bit and then eat a little bit. But over the course of the day, you won't be hungry. Like it's best to eat probably about six times a day 
And uh, if you go see a nutritionist or you talk to a weightlifting coach, uh, they can come up with a meal plan for you. And it's really high in protein, low in carbs. But that way, when you get done, you won't be as hungry. And um, hang on just a second. Okay, so somebody asked what I was eating. Let me show you guys what I got here. Let's see. Okay, so, um, and this is kind of a good, like, typical lunch for me, and that's why I kind of wanted to show it to you guys. Um, this is quinoa, and I actually went to the Whole Foods bulk section, and I found some kind of, like, fancy quinoa that has, like, red and black quinoa in it. Um, and some lettuce, very basic. Got some sprouts on top. Mmm, sprouts. Um, and some avocado. And then I've just kind of, like, made my own little dressing. I've got some white wine vinegar and some olive oil. And that's it. Put a little sea salt on it. Um, and that's my lunch. And um, so quinoa, a really awesome complex carbohydrate um, that um, I should probably just go ahead and do a whole video about. Uh, but that's my lunch. I saw another question over uh, here. Somebody asked why it was so important to eat protein right after you work out. You want to give your muscles, you just worked them out really hard, and you want to make sure that you get those nutrients right back into them. And that first hour of working out um, afterwards is the most important time to recover from working out. So pushing that protein in is really important. Um, also, you got to recognize that um, your muscles are made up of amino acids, and amino acids oh. come from protein. So if you are building up your muscles, you're going to need the amino acids that you get from high quality protein. Um, I saw a really cool question that was, um, how do you stay motivated to be healthy? Or how do you uh, develop the discipline to be healthy? Um, and for me, one of the, the main things is just seeing all of the sick people in my life. Uh, my grandmother was diabetic. My, uh, both of my grandparents died of cancer. Um, a lot of people in my family have, have been sick, and just to, even outside my family, you look at the top 10 causes of death in America, and like eight of them are preventable by lifestyle. It, and that is just ridiculous. It's like, how do we stand here like, oh, we're Americans. We're the smartest country in the world. You know, like Americans are really cocky. And Americans, are, you know, are just buying in to all of this fast food junk, and it's killing us. So I don't want to die. That's how I stay motivated to eat healthy. Um, I want to live as long as I can. I want to have energy. I want to be able to um, work a job my whole life and take care of a family my whole life. I don't want to end up laid up in bed. I don't want to end up unable to, you know, take care of myself. So, um, <laughs> so yeah, so my discipline for, for, for being healthy is just remembering, you know what, this is because I want to live a healthy life. This is because I want to maintain how good I'm feeling right now, even into my old age. Um, and then also when I realized that the food companies do, are just relentlessly marketing to you, they're going out of their way to make you unhealthy. They're going out of their way to make lots and lots of money off of you being unhealthy. And so that's a huge motivator for me because I'm like, hey, I don't want to make those fat cats even richer while they <laughs> kill me. <laughs> um, so Are Food Chemicals Killing You is a really good video that has motivated me a lot to stay away from chemicals. Uh, I hope that, hope that answers your question there. Penguin Chiller has a really cool question. I think he's talking about E. coli, though, not E. coil. Uh, maybe you could answer that, Karina. Make sure you guys like our video, please. Please, 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 please. And make me smile. Uh, I like reading few comments, so thank you, Minister Six Evil. I'm glad you think I look pretty after reading that. Um, penguin chiller, contamination with bean sprouts. Um, that's one of the main reasons I shop at the farmer's market. Uh, in terms of con like mass contamination of vegetables and stuff, especially with something like E. coli, um, really you're only going to have that in like things that are extremely mass produced where they're just really not able to pay attention to it because it's so mass produced like when the spinach got contaminated a year or two ago um, so if you're buying something from a farmers market if it's organic if it's local um, you know you have people who have who are telling you that it is safe and that is that you know they are growing those foods, they are feeding those foods to their family. Um, so that's one really good way to, you know, avoid getting contaminated food. Um, Jim Wilson said, can we shout out to his niece, Ashley? Hi, Ashley. Are you watching right now? Thank you so much. This is so cool. Um, while we're kind of in a little bit of an intermission, make sure that you guys go to our website, psychetruth.net. 
sign up for our newsletter. Um, make sure that you get the inside look at what we do. Uh, we put a really cool picture of Karina and I out today, and we've done some really awesome things. Lots of inside information there. There's some back end access to website or web pages on our website that other people don't get, and then also um, we have the Too Hot for YouTube video that goes out. Also, please like our video. We need more likes. We only have 73. And uh, <laughs> post in the comments, too, where you're from so we know. Thanks, guys. Just a little bit of housekeeping there. Okay, so I really like these. Um, Mystic Manification. Um, how do you convince others that saturated fat is actually not the cause of heart disease? There are tons and tons of scientific um, studies that they have done on different fats and how they affect heart disease. And if you, um, there's this one, or you find a little chart, and it shows the different fats and how they correlate with heart disease. And um, saturated, monounsaturated, polyunsaturated are all kind of right next to each other. And the only one that is highly associated with heart disease is trans fats. And if the other ones are doing this, trans fats are doing this. Um, so trans fats are going to be the worst thing. So I'd say in terms of convincing people, A, recognize that people are resistant to change. People are going to cling to the things they've always believed. People are going to trust their doctor. People are going to trust the mainstream messages that they're getting from television. Um, so just be persistent and bring them facts. Bring them evidence. Bring them articles of people who are saying these different things. And just be patient with them. Um, because it is really hard when somebody comes to you and says, hey, everything that you know about nutrition is totally different. Um, but at the same time, ultimately, they're going to end up appreciating you for sharing that honesty with them and for teaching them something. So just be patient. Um, somebody asked where we get our drinking water from. Um, I drink from the tap, which I've learned recently is not healthy. Um, I also sometimes drink bottled water, which is also not healthy. I'll let Karina explain that in a minute. Um, but I have seen people fill up large gallon-sized jugs of water at Whole Foods. Um, it takes a little bit of time. Sometimes you have to probably bring, I probably have to bring my brother with me to carry out that much water. But I've heard that it's really, really good for you. And Karina knows more on the specifics of that. I'm sure we've made a video about it. So um, maybe you should explain it. Um, so yeah, again, yesterday in the Nutrition Livecast, I talked a lot about water and bottled water and water filters. So if you go back to that, um, uh, live cast from yesterday. Um, when you click on it, it's all indexed, so you'll be able to click on the topic that you want to see and hear just the answer that you want to hear. Okay, Madcap, if you want your joke, uh, post it again so we can see it because I can't see it. And uh, Timothy Cleaver, I've seen you post a couple times about music therapy, and I'm not sure if you've looked on our channel, but um, we've actually got uh, probably six or seven videos from a woman named Hope Young. She is the um, lady who start the Center for Music Therapy here in Austin, Texas, and she's got several videos talking about music therapy, talking about careers in music therapy, and how music therapy can be used um, in a, a you know a ther therapy type setting. So I would check out those videos on music therapy. It's really cool, and it's actually really neat. There's a lot of um, science behind music therapy now, um, and there's a lot of um, applications in a medical field, applications of music in a medical field. Um, so if you're interested in music therapy, check out the videos on our channel, and I highly recommend um, that you go that route. It's really cool. Uh, Sloppy Mantis says, here's a joke I heard today. I'm writing a book on reverse psychology. Please don't buy it. That's pretty funny. Um, somebody asked what my topic was. Uh, disaster science, emergency management, firefighting. Um, any of those things I can talk about, um, other things I can research and then talk about. So um, right now I'm, I'm working on a script, well, I completed the script, but it's going through an editing process on how to survive a zombie apocalypse. Uh, I don't mm -hmm. know if you guys heard about the CDC doing a campaign on emergency preparedness, but I'm going to spin it a little bit and do it kind of my way, so it'll be cool. Mystic Manification, do you, uh, do you think, Karina, do you think at the end of this you can sing a verse of any mainstream song stuck in your head or do so in the near future? I think I will do that. So if you guys, you know, stay on till the end, which is coming up here fairly soon, um, I, will, I will think of a song and I will totally sing, sing you a verse. I think that's kind of cute. <laughs> um, Hey, be, if you haven't already, leave us a comment and tell us where you're from. We really, really like to hear about that a lot. Um, 
We sent out the newsletter today. If you haven't already signed up for it, go to PsycheTruth.net, sign up for it, um, so that you know. Uh, today we got this big map. When we sent out the newsletter, we got to see where in the world people were opening it up at, and they're all over the place. We had people in like Rio de Janeiro, um, some people from India, Norwegian people. It was really cool. I totally feel bad that I don't know how to say certain countries, um, uh, but it was awesome. So <laughs> go do it. Um, okay, oh. there's a lot of cool questions here. Somebody asked what my hobbies are. Um, and then I also, while I'm thinking about it, Max Mann, Anthony, I saw your comment there. What's up, buddy? Thank you for joining us today. Um, some of my hobbies. So music, most of you probably already know that I'm a jazz singer on the side. Um, and I have a music YouTube channel. So music is one of my hobbies. I love hiking in the park with my dog. Um, I love being in a place where you can like turn around a full 360 and it is all green. There is no roads, there is no sidewalks, there is no nothing. So I like being able to go out into nature and go hiking. Um, I like to go to potlucks. I like to cook. Um, what other hobbies do I have? I like to sew. I'm not super great at sewing, but I do enjoy it. Um, Gregory from Greece. We had uh, Jason from Jamaica, Montreal. From the moon! That's my favorite one. Thank you, Jim. <laughs> Whenever I sign into this, like, log me in thing to do conference calls with people. Norway, Northern Ireland, whoa! It always says your location, and so I type in the moon, and it's a good start to a conversation. Um, oh, that's cool. Do you play video games, Karina? No. Yeah, I don't really play video games either. I used to play Second Life, but then I realized my first life was better than my second life, so um, yeah, I don't do that anymore. Um, John from Tampa. Um, I think we might have a few videos on benzodiazepines, um, but we should do a video about you know coming off them and what kind of withdrawal effects you might experience. So I would say check it on our channel to see um, if, you know, Dr. Breeding or someone else has already made a video on that. Um, we've got Bin Laden from Iraq tuning in. That's kind of cool. We've got Germany, Czech Republic, DFW area. Keep telling us where you're from if you haven't already. That's um, kind of fun to see. Uh, uh, Sun Arc. Um, I have not learned music theory and I don't read music right now. I just play by ear and sing by ear. Um, I can read, you know, like a chord chart, which shows you all the changes of the song, um, but I actually cannot, like, sight read music. It's kind of one of, my, one of my goals over the next few years. I would like to actually learn music theory and be able to read music and even, like, write, you know, notation of music. Um, but at this moment, I don't. I just play by ear. We got New York City. Got somebody on a fire department in New York City saying, what's up to woo, you, Ms. Woo. McKenzie? Thank you. You guys um, are the best. Am I married? Nope. Nope. Clearly Canadian. We've got Ottawa, Canada. Um, what do I suggest for acne treatments other than drinking lots of water? Again, I talked about acne yesterday in the uh, other nutrition live stream. Um, some things that I've, I've had a lot of friends who they either um, eliminate dairy and their acne clears up or they eliminate gluten or wheat and their dairy clears up. So one of the first things that I would say is um, try an elimination diet. So what that means is you just experiment with eliminating different things from your diet. And then I recommend keeping a journal and actually keeping little notes to yourself and seeing how it does. Um, give yourself probably like three to six weeks off of a food in order to actually see if it's giving you any kind of results. Um, but yeah, so elimination diets, is one thing I would recommend for acne treatments. And then I would say don't buy any of those crazy chemical crappy products that they try to sell people for acne. Um, just don't do it. If you look up natural solutions for acne in Google, you'll find page after page of people who have written about natural solutions for acne. So I would say avoid all those crazy chemicals, avoid all those crazy products they're trying to sell you, um, and see if you can fix it with diet before you, you know, go to an extreme like that. So I just showed you guys a screenshot of our Facebook page. Just type in Psyche Truth to Facebook and then like us. Um, you'll see a lot of really good information. Somebody asked what my hobbies are. I want to um, know. Well, I like giving back to the community. So I, I am a volunteer firefighter. I volunteer with the search and rescue team 
it's a statewide um, SAR asset, and so um, I'm their public information officer. I get to talk about what we do and then um, let, write press releases and go out when we do certain things. Um, and that's really fun. I really like giving back. And then I'm also on our local community emergency response team board of directors. Um, and so what I do for that is I work with communications and we do the website and we do the newsletters and we do the social media. And I train people. I'm a master instructor through the state. I train people on how to prepare themselves and their families for emergencies. It's really actually awesome. And then I get to train the trainers for that too. So um, it's kind of my hobbies. It's what fun. a cool hobby, right? Hey, my you know my hobby is helping people. I love that. Um, hi from Romania. That's really cool. Um, the nutrition live stream from yesterday is already on our channel. Um, uh, will drinking lots of water and eating less help with weight loss? Yeah, eating less is pretty much always going to help with weight loss. <laughs> um, yeah, drinking lots of water is also really important. Some of the main things that help with weight loss are avoiding sugar, avoiding Coca-Cola and other soda products, avoiding refined flour. So again, if you are looking for some weight loss info, check out The Easiest Diet Ever if you haven't. There's also a video called Weight Loss Mistakes that I think is really helpful. Um, we've got tons of videos on our weight loss um, playlist. That, that uh, the bunny ears was for Minister Six Evil. Uh, <laughs> Shout out to Mac Wack in Seattle. Hi from Sweden. Uh, my wife, uh, let's see, Barbados, that's very cool. Rainy Northern California. Okay, and I've seen this question a couple times about astrology and how it ties into psychology. Um, so, me personally, um, I don't know enough about astrology to... I'm a Virgo. I mean, I, I, and I'm an Aries. I'm an Aries Pisces cusp. Like, I know my sign or whatever, but um, I, I, I don't know enough about astrology to say if I really completely think that it has a whole lot of, um, you know, factual nature. Uh, I think it's really, you know, cool to look at, but, um, but I definitely don't think it really relates to psychology, so to speak. Uh, this is for I am Leland too. Hola, yo habla poquito español. So I speak a little bit of Spanish. He asked if we spoke Spanish. <laughs> Why is it that I'm bothered when other people are overly happy? It puts me into a bummer mood. What should I do to dissipate that irritant? Um, chances are it's because you're kind of like, you know, a little depressed and upset about things. So sometimes if we resent people, which it kind of sounds like that's the feeling you have, like you see someone happy and you're like, oh, yeah. um, I would check out the video. <laughs> There's a video called Bored with Life, How to Find Your Passion. And basically, it talks about, you know, a lot of different ideas for how you might discover what your passion is, how you might find your purpose in life and um, feel that you have some meaning in your life. So I think that would probably be my biggest recommendation. Check out that Board With Life How to Find Your Passion video and start looking at yourself, looking inward. Stop focusing on other people and how happy they are and just focus on yourself and how you can make yourself um, as happy as they are. Um, Mike just handed me this really cool piggy bank he got me for Christmas. He has a little fire piggy. He has a little hole up in the top for money. And Aww. that's cute. It's Is there adorable. any money in it? There's no money. He could have given me like a little bit, I think, to jump start it. Here, I got some money for you. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, I think it's really cute though. I mean, it's painted and that's adorable. It is cute. Look what Mikey got me. <laughs> Thank um, you, Mikey. Karina, my name is Luke. I'm a big fan from England. I like your jazz and intellect. Thank you so much. That's very kind of you. I appreciate that. Um, oh, tea tree oil. Yes, I love tea tree oil. Um, I use, uh, so tea tree oil, it's like, it's a natural antiseptic, a natural antibiotic. Uh, so anytime I have a bruise or a this or a, you know, cut, um, the only thing about tea tree is that it can be very, very strong. So it's, sometimes it's very important to dilute it before you use it topically. Um, I put a little tea tree oil in my dog's, uh, 
dog shampoo so that she gets a little bit of tea tree action too, helps to deter bugs. Um, so yes, tea tree oil is a great uh, essential <laughs> oil there. I love reading the comments. This is so cool. And XX Christ hate. I know that a little while ago you had um, one of your comments before you just got like really dirty with your comments was, um, you know, do I believe in the Holocaust? And I think that's kind of an interesting question because, um, you know, like how would you not believe in the Holocaust? Uh, but at the same time, you know, I want to apply the way that I answered uh, the question about, um, I don't even remember which question it was at this point, um, in terms of like what can really be knowable to us. Um, and, you know, what is really something that we can completely know for ourselves. And the truth is, I don't know for a fact what happened in Germany during World War II. I wasn't there. Um, I read some history books. Um, I've, you know, seen some movies, but it's important to realize that what's portrayed in movies is not history. They're not the same. So a lot of times we think that we know a lot about a topic, but it's just something that we know from what we were taught in school or what everyone else thinks or uh, what some major movie portrays. You know, so I think that when we're looking at history like that, it's really important to recognize what's really completely knowable for me. Um, I, I wasn't there. <laughs> so I can't completely say whether it's true or not, or whether it's real or not. I don't definitively know that for myself. Um, and I would challenge anybody who really wondered that to go back themselves and look at the history and look at the documents um, and just like do that research to discover that answer for yourself. Do you believe in Santa Claus? I think that um, I, I believe that when you're younger, especially, that um, you, you need to believe in something. And I think it's really good to <laughs> have something that you believe in that makes you happy and makes you excited. And regardless of if it's Santa Claus or the Easter Bunny or the Tooth Fairy, um, it, it's really important as a kid, I think, to, to believe in that kind of stuff. I don't I'm know. I'm just going to not answer that question. Um, <clears throat> uh, my father, let's see. Deidre and Henry. Oh, that's your grandma again. Yeah, so certainly. So, so she comes in and she says, I have this personal experience that my family was actually in the death camps and in all of this. And um, certainly we know for a fact that Germany, as well as pretty much every other country involved in World War II, they all had death camps. And a lot of people went to death camps. So um, certainly we know for a fact that there were death camps. But does that necessarily mean that every, you know, that everything that has been said that happened really happened? You know, do we know, you know, whatever different things? I just think that it's important that, um, you know, we go back and do research and not just, you know, depend on the things we know or the things that we learn in movies. You know, either way that you go, you know, either belief system you're on. Um, and, you know, certainly I think that, um, you know, she brings up a really good point, which is, well, you know, what do I have, you know, personally for myself? So, um, well, this before we move on, sorry, I, I just want to say this. It's really kind of cool. Um, my grandfather, who's married to my grandmother, who happens to be watching right now, is a really awesome person. He's taught me a lot of really good things about life. Um, it's really awesome to have such great people in my family. Um, but most importantly, the one thing that I remember that really sticks out and that I apply to my life today is about the news. Um, he told me not to watch one news station to get my news from, not to read one newspaper to get my news from, um, because then the opinions are going to be biased based on what those people believe in. So I have to go out and get my information from everywhere. So I go to different news websites, I go to different newspapers, and I read stories that are the same or similar, um, and then I form my own conclusions. And I think that's what Karina's is trying to say about research. Um, go out and look at different things. and read about it for yourself and form your own conclusions because that's really important to do. Thank you for that life lesson. Um, so this was kind of cool. Sun Arc, what is responsible for my awakening to truth and healthy living? Um, my family was not a big impact. I grew up drinking Coca-Colas and eating macaroni and cheese and eating TV dinners. Um, my parents were not super health conscious people at all. Uh, when I was in college, I was taking some biology classes and I became fascinated with the topic of cancer and how uh, the physiology of cancer in the body. And I kind of started 
going, wow, it seems like all of these chemicals that we're ingesting would actually, you know, be making cancer worse. So my senior thesis in college was called uh, the, the Physiological Effects of Processed Foods and Implications in Health and Disease. So basically my hypothesis of my paper was that these processed foods were having significant effects on people's health and potentially in health and disease. And then in going and doing research on my hypothesis, I found that I was not alone in thinking that. I found Sally Fallon and the Western Aid Price Foundation. I found a whole myriad of different sources that were already doing research on the negative health effects of processed foods and food chemicals. So it was really um, the, the, the cancer courses that I took at St. Edwards that got me interested in health and nutrition. Have you seen, let's see. The movie Food Kills. Um, I actually haven't seen that movie. I haven't seen it either. Um, Thank you for saying my eyes are pretty. You can't really see them that well, but they are blue. And this is my She's real eye color. <laughs> I get that question a lot. So. Thank you. Um, let's see. Thigh highs or pantyhose? I generally opt for thigh highs. <laughs> um, am I a theist? No, not really. I am a spiritual person, but I do not consider myself a religious person. I guess I'm a theist in that I do believe in um, God, but I believe in a God in the sense that it is our communal consciousness. It is all of the things that make us human and that God is within each one of us. God isn't this like far away judgmental being that we'll never meet until we die. Um, God's in you. God's in me. God's in Mackenzie and you guys. Um, so I kind of have a different believing in God than most people um, customarily think of. Um, so here's a question. If I were to take you out to dinner, what would be your type of restaurant? Well, we're not going out to dinner, but my favorite type of food. Oh, that's just a question. I don't like Mexican food. Um, I think it's overdone here. What about you, Karina? I love Mexican food. I think it's oh. freaking awesome, but it's probably because I was born and raised in Austin, Texas. <laughs> and that's probably why I don't like it, because I was born and raised here, too, but I just, it's too, I don't know. Uh, I mean, certainly there's a lot of Tex-Mex places that are, like, not good, but good Mexican food is really good. And when I cook at home, I do a lot of, I guess you could say, like, you know, Mexican-inspired dishes, and I use a lot of avocado and cilantro and jalapenos and, um, you know. I used to, where I used to work, uh, there was a restaurant there. It was, like, a little mom-and-pop um, Italian food restaurant. And when I'd walk in, they knew exactly what I wanted because every single time I went there, I got the same thing, and it was cheese ravioli, with Alfredo sauce and mushrooms, and they made the, the uh, pasta from scratch. So, so delicious. And um, it's called Tony and Luigi's, but I always used to call it Mario and Luigi's. I don't know why. So, Sloppy Mantis, I love your comment. Nice. To me, God is another word for everything. I like that. I like that, too. Um, Thank you so much for the nice pictures, or nice comments about how we look. That's really cool and sweet, too. Okay, so there's a comment about artificial sweeteners. No, they are not okay to have. Artificial sweeteners are even worse than refined sugar, and refined sugar is really, 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 really bad to start with. So um, artificial sugar sweeteners like aspartame avoid like the plague. If you put an aspartame on our channel, you can see a couple videos where we've mentioned it. Um, most of the artificial sweeteners are neurotoxic, among a lot of other negative health implications. So good natural sweeteners alternatives would be honey, uh, maple syrup, even stevia. Um, I don't, haven't done a huge amount of research on stevia, but compared to aspartame, it like can't even compare. So um, go with natural sweeteners like uh, stevia, honey, maple syrup, um, agave nectar is also going to be better than aspartame. Even though there's a lot of controversy over agave, uh, agave nectar, it's still going to be way, way better than high fructose corn syrup, aspartame, or refined sugar. Um, spot, <clears throat> spot it, e, it just asked, what do you think make of protein shakes after working out? My personal trainer has recommended I start taking shakes after heavy weight workouts. I lift weights quite a bit, and that's what I do. Um, we talked about this a little bit earlier in the video, so you might want to like rewind it and watch again and, and see, but um, it's really important to help your muscles recover, so protein helps, especially within that first hour after working out. Um, 
Let's see. What else? What else? Um, are you guys single? Yep. Uh, yes, she's a natural redhead. Uh, you guys, I think that we are about at our time limit. So one last time, I want to invite you to become a Psychic Truth Insider. Uh, just go to our website, psychytruth.net, enter your email, and suddenly you will be receiving wonderful uh, weekly updates from us. We just send out one email per week, um, and it's going to contain links to the videos from that week, uh, links to some of our favorite older videos that you may have forgotten about, and an exclusive Too Hot for YouTube video. So videos that are not available on our public channel, but will be available to you if you sign up for our newsletter. Um, leave us a comment with where you're from if you haven't already. We really like to read comments and stuff. Um, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, we've got about 10 minutes left. So go ahead. Any questions that we haven't gotten to? If, I mean, if you posted it a long time ago, you need to repost your question because, you know, now, you know, it's like it's re-updating every single time. So if you have a question you want us to answer before... Uh, you know, before we wrap this up, then go ahead and leave it now. Also, I want you to leave me where you're watching from, if you haven't done that yet. And then also, what time would be good for you? Um, somebody just said that it's midnight in Greece right now. I have to work tomorrow, so I'm getting off the computer. Um, so we're in Central Standard Time, but let us know what time zone you're in and what time would be good for you to do this live stream. Because we're going to try and do them... Um, do some at like different times so that everybody will be able to, you know, log in and check it out. Um, holy crap. Okay. So, here to review, please make a comment where you're located, a the time zone you're in, and when a good time is for us to do the slide chat with you. Belgium, Marika, Toronto, uh, Cadiz, Espana, Belgium, Ohio. This is so cool. Uh, Norway. I love that. Oh, thanks for the comment about the picture in the newsletter. Make sure you go to our website and you sign up for it if you haven't already. Um, it's pretty cool. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Comments. Wait. Comments. This way? That way? I don't know. Um, I'm so Athena, bad. Yeah, we'll ask Athena to do a live stream. We've also got England, Alabama. We've got Ireland. We've got France. Hey, uh, Italy. I love Italy. Uh, do you believe in karma, Karina? Um, I kind of do. Uh, yeah, I do kind of believe in karma. I definitely believe that, you know, what goes around comes around, even if it seems like people are getting away with really horrible things. Uh, the amount of torment that they are feeling on the inside uh, is their karma getting back at them. And we actually did an entire video about karma uh, that will be going up. It's not up yet, right? It'll probably be going up on Friday. So, um, yeah, if you're interested in karma, definitely check out that video. Um, somebody asked if I've ever donated my hair to Locks of Love, and yes, I have. Um, I just like my hair longer now. I used to have it kind of short-ish. Well, not that short. Maybe like this short. I haven't got it cut in a while, so I mean, I guess I could go donate it. I don't know. I always feel so weird because they put it in a ponytail, and they're like, chop. And I'm like, oh, it's weird. But um, I do like helping people, so... Is something I will look into doing again. Thanks for the reminder, Sean. Um, Canada, is a yogurt a day good for you? Um, if you're going to eat yogurt, uh, there's a brand called White Mountain, which is really good. The key thing is that most of like the Yoplait yogurts and stuff like that, they are so loaded up with refined sugar that you're really not getting very much benefit from them. So what's beneficial about yogurt is that it is a fermented food. And if you can find like a high quality Greek yogurt, or like I mentioned the White Mountain, uh, I think it's called White Mountain is the brand, um, and then use honey or use different berries to flavor the yogurt yourself. So when you're buying a flavored yogurt, like most of the little ones out there, no, they're really not that healthy, sadly, because they're so loaded down with sugar. Uh, Mr. T. Garbo just asked, have you ever donated blood? I have, actually. Um, I've donated a lot of blood. Um, I haven't recently, but um, there's this thing now at the blood bank called apheresis, and that's something that I had done a couple times and I really liked. You actually donate um, the, I think it's the white blood cells. Um, but since I've been sick, I haven't really donated blood. Um, it's really important to me to give back like that. 
Um, if I have enough blood or if my body can produce enough blood to make up for the blood that I give away to help somebody, then that's great. Um, another thing that I suggest is that if you're not an organ donor, that you become one. Organ donation means a lot to me, so, um, and helping save lives is important too. I can't use my organs when I die, but if somebody else can, I think that's really special. Um, when will we be live again? Uh, we'll probably do again next Wednesday at 3 p.m. Central Time, um, and then if we do other uh, live casts, um, sometimes we've just been going on randomly and getting on. So um, being a friend on our Facebook page will be the best way for you to find out when we're going live. So if you go to Facebook and search for Psyche Truth or Karina Rachel or Mackenzie, um, <laughs> you can friend us and then that's going to be the best way to know when we're doing a live chat. Because if we just get on randomly and do one, we'll post it on our Facebook, but that'll probably be the only way to, to really know about it. Um, so again, yeah. and if there's times and stuff that work best for you, leave it in a comment because we are going to do them at varying times so that different people are able to, um, to tune in. Uh, another thing so that you guys know for the holidays, uh, I'm actually putting together and formatting a calendar right now. We'll post information about that on our Facebook page, uh, but it'll have pictures of me, Karina, Jen Hillman, um, Dina. Dina. Dina will be in it. Um, I haven't met Dina yet or Jen, but they are both very pretty ladies. And uh, They'll have a couple months, and then we'll have to have some months, too. So be sure you keep up on our Facebook page for that, um, also our Twitter account, and then our, our website. We want to make sure that you guys know that we have the stuff available. Um, we have a question about Tropicana orange juice. Uh, yeah, that stuff is loaded with additional sugar. If you're going to drink juices, the best thing to do is get a juicer and juice the actual vegetables themselves. Um, also, if you actually turn over the back of the juice, it'll say if it's 100% juice or not. Um, you want to look for things that are 100% juice. Uh, just in general, though, the best bet is to eat the whole entire fruit rather than the juice. When you eat the whole fruit, you get the fiber, the nutrients, and the sugar, rather than just the sugar and some of the and some of the nutrients. <clears throat> Greek yogurt made me vomit as soon as it touched my tongue. Uh, it's a little bit of an acquired taste there, buddy. And again, you probably want to use something to sweeten or flavor it. So usually when I eat yogurt, if I do, I'll throw in a handful of blueberries or strawberries, or even like a little bit of honey. Just like a spoon of honey in there and makes it make it a lot better. So yes, the unsweetened yogurt is probably going to be really, really different, especially if you're used to eating yo play. Um, so yeah, I've never turned down an invitation to eat at dinner at somebody's house because I didn't know what was going in the food. Um, normally, I eat at people's houses if I know who they are and I know how they cook. And yeah, I mean, I don't know about you, Karina. Um, I mean, I've definitely been sometimes at a potluck or a party and there's something there that I can't eat or won't eat. And, um, yeah, I mean, there's definitely times that I will avoid eating something because I'm like, I oh, yeah, probably don't know how that was made. Um, I would never turn somebody down if they offered to make dinner. Usually when somebody offers to make you dinner, they ask if you have any, um, you know, any uh, dietary limitations or something. Um, you know, and if somebody invited me to dinner, I definitely wouldn't like be like, no, I'm not going to go. I just might bring you something. Know, yeah. I just, I just might not show up starving if I was afraid that they had like a bunch of chemical foods or something. Sunark asked if it was okay to add me as a friend on Facebook. Go to my public Facebook page. Just type in my name and you'll find it. Uh, meaning of life is 42. That's, that's my answer. Um, and Karina's going to say goodbye or start the goodbye process. Oh uh, yeah, you guys, um, it is time. Um, I told, I can't remember the name of your screen name, but I told somebody that I would sing a song on our way out, so, um, like our video, please. Like our video, yay. Uh, so how about, um, oh, how about the Adele song? <clears throat> Rolling in the Deep? No, I don't know that one yet. I heard that you Settled down that you found a girl and you're married now. I heard that your dreams came true. Guess she gave you things I couldn't give to you. 
Oh, I love that, that song. Okay, you guys, thank you so, so much. Thank you so much for tuning in. Please be sure to subscribe to our channel. Join our news list, our newsletter if you like our channel. Remember that we can't survive without you. We would be nowhere without you. We would just be sitting here doing a webcam to no one if it wasn't for you. So thank you for your comments. Thank you for liking this video. And I look forward to seeing you guys again soon. Thank you so Bye, much. Bye, guys. See ya. We'll miss you.